Hi, I'm Stu Baca, and I'm a Gen X grown-up, and I support Gen X grown-up on Patreon, and you should too at patreon.com slash Gen X grown-up. No life, no fun. Don't you know that you're a grown-up? Gen X grown-up is a YouTube channel website and audio podcast you're listening to right now. All made for and by people who love exploring media, games, tech, and toys of yesterday and today through the eyes of Gen Xers who refuse to grow up. Your dinner cannot just be french fries. Basically, life sucks as a grown-up. Welcome back, Gen X grown-up podcast listeners to this backtrack edition of the Gen X grown-up podcast. I'm John. Joining me as always, my friends and cohorts, Mo. Hey, everybody. And George. Hey, how's it going, guys? The backtrack edition is, as I'm sure you know by now, the episode where we pick a single nostalgic topic from growing up as a Generation Xer and dig in deep on that. In this episode, we're going to be talking about roadside attractions. Those signs <laughs> along the side of the highway that you tried to beg your mom and dad to stop for while you're on a long road trip. No, no. Gotta make good time. Can't stop. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> we got a lot of those to talk about, uh, but before we do, you know I love taking a moment here at the top of the show to read some fourth listener email, and we have some that will make George happy and sad. Oh, Again. no. <laughs> why do I have to be sad? I don't want to be I sad. Know. Oh, you know why? So it's because we're going to talk about movie musicals again. Oh, okay. Well, that won't make me happy. <laughs> oh. Everybody agrees with me on that one, I thought. Well, just you wait. Oh, Lord. The first piece of fourth listener email is from Patrick. Topic line was movie musicals. I just finished the movie musicals episode, and as someone who works in the industry, it was a lot of fun to listen to. Wow. Oh, oh cool. Huh. I wonder what he does for the industry. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> if he agrees with me, it's going to be an awesome job. If he doesn't... <laughs> A stupid job. It'll be even more <laughs> awesome. A, he's going to be like the janitor on the set or something like that. <laughs> Patrick says, one great, albeit possibly most ridiculous movie musical is Xanadu. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, yeah, John. Yeah. I yep. forgot about Xanadu. Roller skates. Right. He says, it's the story of a Greek muse that visits an artist that paints enlarged copies of album covers to inspire him to work with a retired big band era entertainer in order to build Roller Disco. Who Why in turn else visited would you want by to? Same, blah, blah, blah. blah. Just go, I mean, it's crazy. It's bananas. It has the music of ELO in it, so that yes. was, you know, a recipe right. for, for something. And Olivia Newton-John. I mean, come on. <laughs> I know, right. In this episode, we're going to talk about roadside attractions. In Orlando, when I was growing up, there was a roadside attraction near Disney called Xanadu. It was like this <laughs> really? bubble building. That I never went to it, actually. You drove past it a thousand times. Just but. like the movie. Nobody ever went to it. They just, just like the movie. Past. Nobody <laughs> ever just drove right past it. <laughs> so Patrick says, keep on Gen Xing forever the fourth Patrick. Awesome. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Patrick. Nice variation on our signature sign off, but that was pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, right. Yeah. There's another one coming. Wait for this. Uh -oh. Our second fourth listener email is from our longtime friend, supporter on Patreon, Stubaka. Stubaka. Hey, Stubaka. He says, so I listened to the musicals backtrack on my way to work this morning. Amazingly, I didn't get into a wreck due to uncontrollable <laughs> laughter. Uh -oh. <laughs> Thank goodness. I'm going to take that. Exactly. <laughs> That's, you're funny, but you're dangerous. I'll, I'll take yeah. it. Whatever. <laughs> That's fine. I'm glad he's alive. He says, to my mom, the only requirement for something to be considered a musical is that the music either creates the narrative or advances the plot of the overall work. So by that logic, my apologies to Mo, Purple Rain is not a musical. Woohoo! Yes! I already caved yeah. in on that point, okay? I, I know you did. Yeah, <laughs> I, I did that last time. And, yes, and he you says, by right. that logic, all of the Disney Renaissance movies are musicals. Sorry, John, on this occasion, you two are wrong. Two for two, baby! <sighs> okay, John's wrong. I feel better. Stay tuned. <laughs> he goes on to say, oh, no. so George, now I have to come to you. Oh, Lord. Here we go. I'm if dead. you have not seen Monty Python's The Meaning of Life, you no longer have the high ground to give John crap about not seeing the Goonies. <laughs> I don't think that counts in the same pantheon of Gen X movies as the Goonies, though. Uh, Stubaka said it. It is fact. Yeah. yeah. Right, Sorry. Fine. I'm not going to argue with Stubaka. It's a fourth listener edict, so we have to follow I'm not it. Gonna, I'm not going to argue with Stubaka. Not because he's a fourth listener, but because he's Stubaka. That's fair. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he said, this doesn't excuse John, but you both have some movies you have to watch now. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I I've seen both of those, so I'm good. Oh, thank you, Mo. We're so, we're so proud of Mo's you. the yes, glue right. that holds the show together. There we go. Someone's got to represent. Stu goes on to say, by the way, I've seen Rocky Horror over 100 times in the theater. About half nice. of those were as a cast member. Oh, wow. Oh, very cool. And then he says, John, mad props to you for bringing up Meet the Feebles. That you, have you guys watched Meet the Feebles yet? I have, have not yet. It's on my list. It's on my list. It's one of your it. damn puppet movies. I'm not watching that. <laughs> it is. He says, I've been a huge Jackson fan ever since he saw that as a kid. As a side note to that, I found that at a movie shop in Dallas in the early 90s called The Forbidden. It was one of those dingy shops that sold alternative stuff you would never otherwise have known about before the internet. I'd love those shops and miss them greatly. Yeah, yeah. I'm with you. Yep. 
that's the sad thing of the departure of video rental stores that we talked about in a tire backtrack. Yeah. Meet the Feebles probably would have been done if there wasn't a distribution network like that. Oh, yeah. He wraps up and says, great work as always. Keep it up. I won't say forever fourth listener. I prefer a more Marine Corps take on it. Simper Cortis. Always the fourth. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right. We get sophisticated here. I know, right? That's we really uptown. I know, right? We always love it when the fourth listener takes time out of their busy day to write in and tell us what they think of the show or if George is right, I guess, or if John is wrong, yes. I suppose you, you can always get your email read or just want to write in and talk about how Mo is the glue that holds us together. All of that is welcome. <laughs> you know, even a blind squirrel find a nut every now and then, right? Every once in a while. Yeah, Why are you happens. talking about my blind squirrel nuts now? <laughs> 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 Thanks for writing in. If you want your email featured here on the show, hit us up. Podcast at GenXGrownUp.com and you'll be read right here with all the due reverence it is deserved. So now it's time to get into our backtrack on roadside attractions right after this. Have you ever explored the wonders of science or discovered your new favorite place? Have you ever experienced the thrills of the old Wild West or tasted absolute perfection? You can find all these moments and many more on a Kansas getaway. Request a free visitor's guide at TravelKS.com and plan your moment today. Roadside attractions is our topic in this backtrack. I know we all have different experiences as to how we interact with the roadside attractions. I know that for my part, we had long road trips uh, always as a family, and we have even had a whole backtrack where we talked about what we did in the car oh, yeah. on those road trips. Right, yeah. But, you know, here we're talking about if we could get our parents to stop, people were trying really hard <laughs> to get us to pull over. That was in large part because of the interstate system in general, because it used to be when you drove somewhere, you drove through all these little towns and you saw all these cool things on the side of the road. But when the interstate system came along, they needed a way to get you off the road, so they had to have some kind of sensational thing to get you to pull over. You know, sometimes just being a Stuckies wasn't enough. You had to actually have you know, <laughs> being a Stuckies <laughs> was always enough. Okay, <laughs> right? So they need to have the giant this or the biggest one of these or stop and see this this the haunted that. world record of this. Yeah, or right. Yeah, yeah, right. And I think car rides haven't gone away. That's obvious. People go on family vacations. But we talked about in our uh, what you do on long car rides backtrack that you were trying to occupy time. And part of that we even talked about was staring out the side of the road and like playing uh, license plate bingo or whatever. Mm -hmm. But now, you know, kids can occupy their time on a screen or on a tablet. And I don't think they're really looking out the side of the window to see. Oh, yeah, I know. It's like my two nephews are driving up from Jacksonville to New York to stay with the grandparents. Mm -hmm. And I would bet money that at any point I could ask them what state they're in and they'd have no idea. No idea. Yeah. None. What does Google say? <laughs> I don't know where I'm at. <laughs> I don't know. Oh. Let me check Google Maps. It says I am in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was a big thing, too. I mean, we had those maps, right? And you had the regular maps that you would buy at the gas station. But I specifically remember maps that you got that pointed out the different roadside attractions. Like they had like big cartoon bubbles, like pointing mm -hmm. to a specific oh, right, right. location sure. or exit or something like Regional that. Regional ones, right. Yeah. I don't think you really get that with Google Maps or Waze or any of that stuff anymore. So that might be another reason. Because if you're looking at the screen and the screen doesn't tell you it's coming up, you're just going to miss it. All you see is a, right. a, a gray line that I'm traveling along. <laughs> <laughs> so before we get into talking about all of these roadside attractions, that by the way, most of these are still around in some form or fashion. They're not all dead. So I want to start with you, Mo. What is your experience? Would your parents stop for just random roadside things. Did you have any experience with them? What, what what did you do? I think it was mostly luck. If my dad either had to go to the bathroom or <laughs> was tired at the moment we were passing one, maybe. Mm. But even then it was like, we wouldn't have time to go in usually. So, I mean, we did a couple, but not many. Right. What about you, George? I mean, no, we never stopped. There's only <laughs> one and I don't think it even made our list. But we never stopped. My father was just like, no, it's... It's a six hour drive. We're making it in two and a half. So we don't have time. Oh, no. Yeah. We had a lot of family trips. We would stop sometimes. My dad was like a he was also wanting to really make time. But also my mom was pestering. We need to stop and enjoy. And we're on vacation, you know, and they would fight a little bit. Then we'd stop at one or two things. And some we would stop because they became tradition that we'll talk about later, like Rock City or Ruby Falls. It was kind of along the East Coast. We'll get to those. But then there was the really, really the tough ones for me. My dad used to be a truck driver and you'd go in long hauls with him and you're not stopping. 
in an oh, 18 wheeler yeah. to go and see, you know, largest bottle of twine. I mean, you're not going to do that because <laughs> you're literally working. Yeah. He had a time frame he had to meet. He yeah, couldn't be right. stopping and letting you play around on, you know, the giant mudslide Adobe <laughs> thing in New Mexico or wherever. Yeah. So that meant that you saw so many things because you're on the road for so long and you stopped at none of them. Moreover, we're living vicariously through the list of what's available now. Now that we're adults, we're driving. We could actually pull over at any of these now if we wanted to. Yeah, but I don't. <laughs> I was actually considering doing that for like a trip but specifically to stop at you know like that would be the purpose of the trip is to go from one roadside attraction to another oh, so you don't yeah. have a destination right this is a road trip with no end it's just a loop and you're going to stop anywhere you want exactly i think you make a lot out of that if you tried yeah oh sure i'm sure you to do a whole long vacation with that. Well, yeah. I mean, obviously, we've got a list that's longer than any list we've had on the show before to go through. So, Well, let's start talking about some of those. So the biggest kind of category that I kind of jumped into first was to get you to pull over, they have to have something sensational, right? So the biggest this or the best one of these and that kind of thing. And Mo, you mentioned on, I think, our promo oh, yeah. the, last week, the world's largest ball of twine. <laughs> Didn't Weird Al do a song about that? He might have. Yeah, I keep thinking that movie. Movie, uh, that movie Michael. Oh, the one with uh, John Travolta. John Travolta, yeah. where he was the oh, right. archangel. Oh, right, right. And yeah. his whole thing yeah. was he wanted to stop at all these different. I want to see the world's largest ball of twine, and that's totally <laughs> that's what made me think of it. I always think of Vacation, National Lampoon's Vacation. I think that was one of the ones mentioned in there. Every time Clark Griswold wanted to stop at something, remember he had the oh. computer where the little kids somehow magically brought their video game onto his mapping program, and <laughs> right. but it was always like, oh, we're gonna go through day one, folks. Here's what we're doing for day one. So the whole thing was like what most thinking about doing was planning that trip just, just to seeing see. that stuff it wasn't about getting there in the most efficient way it was about sharing those experiences with his children which is apparently what he had done when he was a kid well it's a thing the world's largest ball of twine is a real thing in yeah. cocker city kansas let me tell you if you get a chance look it up on the internet because the picture is pretty impressive <laughs> it's a monster i think mo you're gonna have a lot of work putting in links in the show notes oh, some I know. Of these it's crazy. because some of them just you can't do them justice verbally that which i say here i'm going to try to do justice to hundreds of them verbally but hey we're we're going to try. We're stopping the podcast now, apparently, then, because if we can't do them justice, what are we doing? And you know, the world's largest ball of twine keeps getting bigger because they encourage locals and visitors to add twine to it every time they come in and see it. What do you just lay some rope on it or how do you add twine to it? It's enormous. And you just they you pick up some twine they have laying there and you weave it in and it just adds to this enormous, wow. just massive, itchy rope. <laughs> I mean, because unless they have some way for you to climb to the top of it, like some scaffolding system or something. Wouldn't it get like just at the bottom, like a hoop all the way around it or something and become not a ball anymore? It would be like, you know, the planet with the rings around it yeah. or something. I saw a picture of it and it does look rather domish. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. okay. Yeah. You know, We're probably overthinking the world's largest ball yeah, of twine. So just, <laughs> right? it, it, it's, it's not like geometrically perfectly <laughs> spherical anymore. It's, well, it's rope, for it God's sake. It says it's a ball. I mean, well, it, it, well, is. it is. Yeah. It is. It's just not a perfectly round ball. Okay. <laughs> well, how about some other superlatives? You could swing through Kerhonks in New York and see the world's largest garden gnome. Mm, or I might not. <laughs> He's 13 foot tall. His wow. red hat is taller than the hills and the, and the buildings around him. Wow. Yeah, that's 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 a little too creepy for me. That's like child's play type stuff. No, no I don't think I'm going to see that. <laughs> How about the world's largest fish statue? Would you like that? Okay, now that I might go see. <laughs> what, what kind of fish is it? Uh, Does it matter? Well, <laughs> is it, I mean, is it important? <laughs> it might be. It's a macro. Some fish are uglier know. than others, so it depends. It's a bit of a commute. It's clear over in uh, Wisconsin, Hayward, Wisconsin. Oh. It's outside of the National Freshwater Fishing Hall of Fame. Oh, freshwater fish. Okay. Yeah. So, appropriately so enough. it's a big bass. It's probably like a bass. Yeah. Big mouth bass or something like that. Yep. It's funny looking at some of these, like the biggest fill in the blank kind of places, because it's like someone basically they build giant statues of random crap. Yeah. Just to get your attention. Just to get yeah, your, Of course. Oh, the world's largest beagle. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess some of them have to do with what they want you to come visit like in this case the world's largest fish statue obviously it has to do with that freshwater fishing hall of fame so i imagine that some of them have been built in that manner but then other ones 
largest ball of twine. What's that? Attra- we just have a lot of rope here in this town. So, yeah, it's just you know, to we get didn't you have there. Anything else well, you know, they want to get you there, but then they want to sell you a keychain and they yeah. want to sell you, you know, a picture and they want to sell you, you some know, a, a placemat or whatever they oh, have. Yeah, some course. twine, yeah. right? <laughs> so when I say it's the world's largest fish statue, nobody asked me the obvious question. What was the obvious question? How big is it? Oh, uh, how big is it? Okay, no, I'm not doing that. Four stories. That's it's what? four stories tall. <laughs> yes. That's Jesus. a big ass fish. <laughs> that is a big ass fish. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if it's one of those that like you can walk up inside of it like you know the eiffel tower or something like that where they've got a staircase system in it you can look out his mouth right <laughs> <laughs> look mom yeah, i'm holding cool. on the hook <laughs> oh yeah or you see it there with a big rod and reel like you're catching it that'd be awesome right it's a <laughs> six-story rod and reel <laughs> <laughs> how about the world's largest teapot in chester west virginia uh, I didn't think of West Virginia as a tea place, but okay. And now, if it actually made tea, maybe. If it made tea. Listen, you got to think if you, if you go to the world's largest teapot, at least they'll sell you tea. Probably not made in the teapot. Does it mean like in 40 years, there's going to be like the world's largest Keurig machine somewhere? <laughs> where... God, imagine the size of the K cup in that thing. <laughs> so we got to ask you how large this thing is because we have to do that now every time. You should. Okay. okay. How large is it? 12 foot tall, 44 feet wide. Wow. That is pretty big. That's a lot of tea. That's a lot of <laughs> yep. teapot there. Holy cow. All right, there's a few more of these superlative biggest and best kind of things. There's first one is in Seattle, Washington. It's just called Hats and Boots. See, I thought it'd be like the largest cup of coffee or something. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it, it won't be the largest. It'll be the Vinti. Coffee yeah. cup or something Vinti, like that, right? Vinti, Vinti. So this Hats and Boots was originally built as part of a gas station. Oh, yeah. But it turns out it's just a giant hat and boots on the top of this building. And again, it's pull over and see the giant hats and boots while you're going through Washington. It's just a reason to get you to pull over. <laughs> that is odd, isn't it? It is. I don't know why. Yeah. Why, <laughs> why not? In Mo, it's like your trip. If I was on the road trip or had nowhere else to go. Would I pull over and see the giant hats and boots? Hell yeah. yes, I yes, would. Yes, I would. Why, I would why see wouldn't that. I? Yeah, of course. You get the perspective photo where it's like you're trying to wear the hat, you know, in pers- forced perspective <laughs> yeah. or something. Of course you, you know. would. Yeah. Uh, Boston, Massachusetts, they have what they call the hood milk bottle. Whoa. Yeah, you would think Boston, historical landmarks, but this one's not. This is just, it is a giant milk bottle. First of all, what's a milk bottle? Okay. Right. Used to be you got milk <laughs> delivered to your home. And so it's a specific shape that they would deliver at the front of your house. Right on Congress Street in Boston is just this giant milk bottle that's just a statue sitting there and people come and get their picture taken with it. Huh. Why not? Kind of like the Vegas <laughs> sign, right? You know, people just pull over into the middle of the highway just to take a picture with the sign that, you know, everybody knows, welcome to that Las is, Vegas. That is a real <laughs> danger, actually. <laughs> right, I know. <laughs> Right. If you've been to Vegas, that's just like it's like the divergence of a couple of roads and they're splitting off and people literally just pull over anywhere yeah. and run out and sit in front of that thing. And so the milk bottle probably is a nuisance. Let's <laughs> petition. Get rid of the milk bottle. Is it dangerous? I don't know if it's dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> There's a great one that's I think is debatable, too. I can't believe this. But if you ask somebody, where is the center of the world? Where would you consider that to be? Mm, the core of the Earth? Yeah, that's, that's what, what I, I would, would think. think too. Yeah, right? that's, yeah. That's, that's or, like, or like one of the like the North Pole or the South Pole or something. Thing. Apparently, <laughs> Felicity, California. What? They have a site called the Official Center of the World. Wait, official by who? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who are the officials? Official by Felicity, this? California. <laughs> are there some geologists out there that, you know, have just gotten together and said, no, this is it. This is where the center of the world is. Because technically, being a sphere, isn't every part of it the center of the world could be considered from a certain perspective? Yeah, they're flat earthers or something. And, you know, <laughs> well then they just took their tape measure and they hooked it over the edge of the earth and they just ran it until it got to the <laughs> right, right. exactly well no so they what they have is there does it have a stone pyramid in the sonoran desert in felicity california and the authorities there will tell you this is the authoritative center of the earth okay that sounds definitely new agey <laughs> kind of yeah kind of lay lines. It's like YouTube and- clickbait. It's like, even if you disagree, you might pull over just to argue. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. This is not the center of the earth, blah, 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 but I will buy a bottle opener from you. <laughs> Whoa, get up. Get your pedals. Get your paddle. Get your camera. Come on, get some clothes on. Okay, where's the lake? Where's the museum? Where's the beef? Found it. Run. Swim. Climb. Snap. Twirl. Dive in. Tune out. Smile, laugh, love. Take a trip you'll never forget. Only 
in Minnesota. Another surefire way to get people to pull over is if they see something that's recognizable, that's a character or maybe a, a monster of something. In Blue Earth, Minnesota, they have the giant statue alongside the road of the Jolly Green Giant. Uh, okay. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. That was pretty much an easy pickoff, right? Like somebody somewhere was going to do that one. Well, he's he's already a giant. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I don't know if it's actually the company has the Jolly Green Giant there or they just, I guess you can make a Jolly Green Giant anytime you want to if you just well, have the wherewithal. Yeah. And you want to invest. I wonder about <laughs> copyright, but, you know, it's got to be the company. The company has to have some kind of headquarters or something located there, right? Right. Over in Margate, New Jersey, there's, now this one's famous, Lucy the Elephant. Mm. Actually, I have seen that one. Oh, have you? Yeah. Okay. okay. I have seen that one. Tell us about Lucy the Elephant then. So, Jesus, been, God, that's a really long time ago. It actually used to be, somebody actually lived inside of it at one point. What? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It had windows and it was tall. God, how tall was that sucker? It's it had a to be six story. Five, oh, elephant. Six stories. Okay. I was thinking six like five stories. Six stories. Yeah. Man. And yeah, a guy actually used it like as an office or something. I mean, it's just one of those weird things that you just sort of look at. You're like, huh. Okay, why not? It's it's on the National Park Registry of Historical oh, Landmarks. Really? <laughs> it's not a ball of twine. I mean, this is something. This, this, is, this is actually recognized. I figured Jersey only has so much going for it, so they figured, eh. <laughs> you had to throw him a bone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll give him that one. Have you guys heard of Miles the Monster? No. Mm, nah. No? This is in Dover, Delaware. It's at the site of the, uh, the Dover International Speedway in Delaware. And so Miles the Monster is a 46-foot-tall car crush monster. Oh, okay. So he's like one of those big <laughs> hydraulic powered T-Rex kind of things where they pick it up with their jaws and rip it apart and all that kind of stuff. I got you. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if he still crushes cars. He did at one point, but he may just be on display now, but he's 46 foot tall and he has the ability, had at least had the ability to crush cars. And now it's something that he's total Instagram bait. You got to go stop by Delaware and see Miles the monster. <laughs> okay. I wonder if any of them like market themselves as Instagram bait. <laughs> Well, why not? Yeah, because they've been around so long. They predate Instagram in most cases, I would think. I mean, it's not like you built the largest oh, of course, ball of twine right. in the last year or two. No, it, it takes time to create the ball of twine. <laughs> so how about some dinosaurs? Yeah, there's lots of those around, right? Yeah. In, in Cabazon, California, they have the Cabazon dinosaurs. Hmm. They have a pair of dinosaurs, 150 foot long brontosaurus and a 65 foot tall Tyrannosaurus Rex. Nice. <laughs> wow. Made out of concrete and steel. Holy well, cow. So not paper mache then. <laughs> well, no, no. <laughs> well, also, they're not crushing cars, but they are enormous. <laughs> so, hey, John, I mean, we're, you're from Jacksonville. Yeah. Do you know that dinosaur on Beach Boulevard? What? No. There is a, I want to say giant, but it's definitely a very large one. It's like probably like 20 feet tall. It's on Beach Boulevard in a strip mall. And apparently the owner of the land agreed to let them build that strip mall. But that dinosaur cannot be touched. The dinosaur was there before. Right. It's been there for God knows how long. I personally think the guy's wife is buried <laughs> under it, but that's just me. Ooh, wow. <laughs> Do you mean like that's where they put her when she passed or that's where he put her when he decided to pass her? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it could go either way because that was a big stipulation that that dinosaur can never be moved. Oh, if you drive wow. down Beach Boulevard, you'll still see it's there. And basically it's not very well supported. It, so the dinosaur has this like big bone crutch kind of thing. <laughs> it's pretty funny. <laughs> I'll put a picture of it. Okay. The crypt of the dinosaur with the bone that, crutch. That's just a personal theory. So, you know. <laughs> right, well, this That might be uglier than the Cabazon dinosaurs, but they say that those dinosaurs in California are one of the most Instagrammed attractions in the U.S. And they also made the list of the ugliest statues of every state. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> like even the states they're not a part of, they're just ugly there as <laughs> they're well. Just that's ugly how ugly wherever they are. you go, wherever <laughs> they go. <laughs> we reached out in advance of this show to our followers on social media, wherever they may be. We said, hey, we're doing a backtrack about roadside attractions. Do you have any anecdotes or stories or memories? Uh, and we got a few responses. Uh, and the first one I want to read is from T2. Hey, T2. He says, south of the border on the trip down I-95 along the East Coast. You guys remember south of the border? Even oh my seeing God. It? That's in our re air region of the, of the how country you, How can you not know about it if you drive down 95? George, did you ever like see it I, what to I, or no? No, no? You remember it? We didn't go down 95. Uh, okay. No, we always went down 75 to Orlando. We never went east. The only time we went east was to go to Jacksonville directly. So we mm. never ended up on 95. You had such a sheltered childhood. You missed out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He says, and rightly so, the billboards start like 200 miles before it in either direction. And almost every exit, you'll see the billboard. How many more miles there is before yeah, it shows up? And it up. starts like hundreds of miles away. He says, we made such a big deal about stopping once that we finally convinced my dad to spend the night nearby. 
Good job. Wow. Every hotel was booked <laughs> solid except the Howard Johnson, and the only room they had left was this huge sweet thing under the iconic orange Hojo roof. Super expensive, and it was absolutely amazing. <laughs> it was the first time I stayed in a room by at a hotel by myself. He said, we ended up staying all the next day. The Hojo had a big pool, free putt-putt for guests, and most importantly for my dad, a coffee bar. <laughs> Finally, we get to south of the border, which they made his dad stop for. South of the border was cool and all, very touristy, but they had this huge water tower shaped like a sombrero. Yep, they did. Yep. There was a yeah, fee yes, to do. ride the elevator to the top, but I remember loving the view. <laughs> <laughs> of not much. <laughs> of not much of the surrounding uh, <laughs> shops for South of the Border. Exactly. <laughs> I just can't get over just the signs because there's just so many. They're funny. Well, they are. My favorite sign, though, is the one that when you pass it, the sign says, you, you just, just passed. missed it. Yeah, you just passed. <laughs> like, I'm going to turn around on the interstate and go back. <laughs> okay, for you, George, since you didn't even know about it, south of the border is the halfway point between Florida and New York. Oh, yeah. We would have never gone that direction. It's yeah. like the border of the middle of the United States. So south of the border meant south of the midway point between the two. Okay. It was themed tongue in cheek as a faux Mexican style area. So south of the border, get it. Uh, the rest area has restaurants, gas stations, a video arcade in the day it did. I'm sure now it doesn't. And uh, fireworks stores, golf course, and its mascot was Pedro, the caricature of a Mexican bandito. <laughs> so uh, k- kind of kind of like the Frito bandito, kind of culturally insensitive, I suppose. I don't know. If, exactly. Yeah, That's like right? Thing. <laughs> it was a big deal if you're going north or south along that corridor. I, I don't know if I ever stopped, but it was one of those that you saw constantly going up and down I-95. They have just like the tacky gift shop and it, it in a way, it's its own charm, but it's it's definitely... Uh... All of these are tourist traps. That one may be the most tourist trappy of any of them. It's right. an artificial landmark and border established as, this is it. This is the halfway point. Who cares? It's the halfway point of the middle of the US? Okay. <laughs> well, it's like the center of the earth. I mean, come on. Right. Well, T2, thanks for writing in. If you were lucky, you could have stayed at a better hotel in Tanapa, Nevada. You could have stayed at the Clown Motel. Ooh, that's something creepy about that. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Just a solid nope. Not going to do it. Yep. It's well worth visiting if you love or hate clowns. They have a terrifying sign. It was a clown themed lobby, a clown themed pool, a clown themed everything. And there's clowns inside of every room. Mm-mm. Wait for it. Oh, good Lord. It's right across the street from an abandoned graveyard. Of course. It's not abandoned. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> right. <laughs> it, it's full of clowns. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's full of clown victims. That's what that place is. Oh, yeah, there okay. it is. What's the therapy that they do? Like immersion therapy, right? If you're afraid of snakes, they just have you hold a bunch of snakes and you get over it. This is like, if you're afraid of clowns, stay at the clown motel in Tanapa, Nevada. I was looking at some pictures of it. That place is creepy you as it? hell. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. You had to right. look at pictures to know that it was creepy as hell, really? Clown motel <laughs> well, I, didn't give it away? <laughs> it could be happy clowns. They're not. No, but exactly. No. Uh-uh. No, but these are definitely Pennywise clowns. I mean, these are these are bad. <laughs> Pennywise. Yeah. They, so you could have a great clown, but then it's, if it sits around in a hotel room for 40 years, it's now a creepy clown. I mean, it's just yeah, yeah, it's true. That's what's going to happen. If it sits around in a yeah. hotel room for five minutes, it's now a damn creepy clown. <laughs> <laughs> what's it doing here at all? Get out of my hotel room. <laughs> the- oh, all right. Let's get away from creepy clowns. We have some other creepy stuff. Unger, West Virginia is the Farnham Fantasy Farm. Hmm, huh. Okay. This is a place that's full of weird, like things that look weird in photographs that aren't. What? Uh, you can look dainty in a photo, like you're smaller than you should be. Oh. oh, oh or oh. like a house that's built at a weird angle, so it looks like you're standing. So it's all forced perspective stuff. Then. Yeah, that kind of thing. Forced perspective, or the house is built crooked, so when you stand in it, it looks like you are warped and the house is straight. Oh, okay. That could be kind of cool, actually. Yeah, I like those. There used to be, not a roadside attraction, but an attraction proper down in Orlando when I was growing up called Mystery Fun House. And they had tons of rooms like that you could go through. And I remember that in all these creepy, weird, different dimensional, you know, the floor is not level and the things roll the wrong way. They were constantly playing Walk Like an Egyptian by the Bengals. That was, that was somehow the most... <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was the theme for these creepy rooms in, in at the spook house. But I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> 
<laughs> Moving on to Bowman, South Carolina, the UFO uh-huh. Welcome Center. How is that uh, not in Nevada? Is my first question. I there's got to be one in Nevada. There are. Well, I'm there's sure there's tons are. of that stuff in Nevada. There's even the, there are. the famous mailbox that you go and apparently oh, that's yeah, like the, the mailbox, mailbox in the middle of nowhere. Or, and right, there's right. UFO yep. cafes. Yeah. I mean, it's not the only UFO Welcome Center. They just happen to right. call themselves that. But, but this is the official one. This is the official yeah. UFO Welcome Center. <laughs> <laughs> it's at the center of the pyramid of the earth or whatever the hell that is. In Bowman, was. South Carolina, <laughs> this little town is the home to the UFO Welcome Center. They have a UFO replica and a scrap metal offense extending a message of friendship to our outer space brethren. So like well, written thank God. on the ground out of scrap metal is this welcome in case you're looking at it from a drone or from a UFO, I guess, above. That assumes an awful lot that aliens could read English. Well, aliens are dumb. No, but I mean, I, they have probed enough it, people in the butt to figure out the how more English universal works. language. Haven't we already proved that with contact and other sci-fi films that are obviously <laughs> absolutely true? <laughs> So you're saying they should like they should put 42 in scrap metal on the ground. It's yeah, the answer to life universe and everything. Thing, right? That's the I'll number get, they I'll should put out one. there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move along to West Virginia, a little town called Anstead. They have, all right, no laughing, no chuckling, the mystery hole. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you couldn't do it. I knew you couldn't do it. <laughs> I wasn't going to try to hold that one back. I just <laughs> turned my microphone off. That was the only way I got through that. <laughs> the mystery hole provides plenty of natural wonder. <laughs> <laughs> uh, objects seem to roll in the opposite direction just, of gravity. Just stop. Water flows uphill. <laughs> oh, just stop. Plenty of more optical <laughs> illusions. Oh my uh, god! I'm, I'm going to stop with the mystery hole. We're done with that. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's listen to another the of our fourth no listeners. <laughs> Speaking of the mystery hole, Michael wrote in on Facebook. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry, Michael. Oh. Michael says, I remember my grandparents taking me and my sister to Spook Hill in Lake Wales, Florida. I do too. I grew up right in that area. Basically an optical illusion, but it looks like your car is rolling uphill. It was a surprise trip. The other place I always wanted to go was to Stucky's. It was a tourist trap. <laughs> it was a store you used to see. It wasn't, Stucky's wasn't just one thing. It was lots of Stuckies. But yeah, yeah, absolutely. yeah, we know that George is a huge fan of Stuckies. Hell yeah. <laughs> Spook Hill. Now I have actual first hand experience with Spook Hill. Do you guys have ever seen this or heard of it? I've no. never seen this. Well, we know George, your dad, would never let you go to Spook Hill. Nope. Because he's trying to make time. I mean, unless he was, unless it helped him to make time getting somewhere, he might have done it then. <laughs> unless but. it was a vortex that moved him ahead and now, all right. <laughs> Spook Hill is, I don't know if it's really a roadside attraction, but it's definitely an area oddity that reminds me of the mystery hole in the Farnham fantasy we just talked about. Literally, it is just a road that's alongside, you know, the main, main highway, and you drive your car to the bottom of the hill, and you put it in neutral, and your car will roll uphill. Okay. Uh huh. Yeah. And the whole thing is just, it's an optical illusion because the entire area is on a hill. And so it, it seems like relatively that you are going uphill, but really you're gradually going downhill, but on the side of a hill. So the, the area around you appears to be uh, going uphill, but it's just going down. That's got to do wonders for people with car sickness. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I used to literally, we would go in the middle of the night and go, let's go over to Spook Hill. And we take out our spare tire and let the spare tire roll up the hill and... <laughs> It's a great thing to do when you're out <laughs> juvenile delinquent and having a beer and you where you shouldn't be just doing the stupid stuff. Uh, I remember hill. my first beer. We rolled uphill <laughs> both <We> rolled. ways. <laughs> I got drunk, passed out, and rolled uphill. <laughs> when mom gets on the tablet and says things like, they aren't going to be little forever, I know summer vacation is close. The ride in the car seems really fast. And when we go to West Virginia, there's a lot of things to do. Things we don't get to do at home. I wish all my friends could come here to see people doing really fun things. Are you ready for a comic book podcast that breaks the mold? Look no further than Drawn and Panel. Drawn and Panel. Drawn and Panel. I'm George. I'm a Gen Xer who rediscovered his childhood passion for comics and decided to turn it into a podcast. I'm Jason. I've been a comics fan my whole life and even worked with companies in the industry, so I've got my finger on the pulse of the comic book world. And I'm John. I don't know Stan Lee from Stan Laurel, but I know what I like. As a true comic book outsider, I ask the dumb questions to keep Jason and George on their toes. Together, Jason, John, and I dive into books from the golden age to the modern age with a particular focus on the indie comics. Get your news, reviews, interviews, insight, and commentary from all corners of the comic book world here on Drawn and Paneled. 
Find us anywhere you listen to podcasts or over on our website at drawnandpaneled.com. Another surefire way to get people to pull over off the interstate and see what you've done is to build something interesting or different or unique. Yes, if you build it, they will come. And not just a monster, but sometimes just unique homes or buildings or structures. Bishop Castle in Rye, Colorado. Most private homes wouldn't be a roadside attraction, but this one is. It is a wood and stone castle continually being built upon since 1969. And it looks like a castle. Really? It's a personal home, like your elephant, Mo, but it's not. (laughs) (laughs) Is that what a McMansion would be considered if you have a castle that's continually being added on for 40, 50 years? I'd say one of the houses I always wanted to go see which I guess is considered a roadside attraction, is the Remington House. Do you know that one? Yeah, made by the woman who is the heir to the Remington rifle fortune. Right. And she was terrified that all the ghosts of all the people her guns have killed would right. like haunt yep. her. So she basically built this house with like false hallways and rooms and they never stopped building onto it. And it's just this weird, obscure place. To confuse the clowns. Yes, exactly. Because <laughs> they're hard to confuse. There's another novelty house in Houston, Texas called the Beer Can House. Texas? Oh, okay. Anybody want to take a guess at what this house is built out of? Anyone? Legos? Uh, I'm going to say 20. <laughs> Twine. <laughs> there might be twine. 50,000 beer cans used to line the roof and walls. Huh. <laughs> So we could have built one of those in my old fraternity. <laughs> you, maybe you did. Maybe you took your scrap and built some houses out of it. It could be. There's another one in Moab, Utah called the Hole in the Rock. This is literally a house carved in to it's a 5,000 square foot home carved Jeez. into a rock face. Wow. Just just because. Why? I don't just know. Just because. So here's one they parlayed into more. So it's got that and it's got a zoo and exhibits and a general store. And, you know, you can buy a, a snow globe that has the Hole in the Rock house in it, I'm sure. <laughs> You, you could buy a replica of the hole. It's like, it's just like a, they sell you a box. It's just empty. And they're like, look, the hole's right yeah, there. It's in there. It's like, it's like Wiley Coyote. He has the liquid hole. and He pours yeah, it out. It's like right. a black spot. The, little, the black spot. He throws it on the ground and right. falls through. There's another one in Arizona called The Thing. Like John Carpenter? You'd think. <laughs> but no. So as you drive through Arizona, there are signs along the highway. This is a, a, exactly what you think of as a roadside attraction saying, stop and see The Thing. And can you imagine how disappointed you would be? You pull over and it's a row of striped metal sheds. It's not a thing. The building is just these metal sheds that house these little museums. If I'm going to pull over to see the thing, I want to see a thing. I want to see something in the snow that is <laughs> turning a dog into a monster. That's what I'm looking to yeah. see. I mean, I'll be happy with anything I can look at and be like, what's that thing? I'd be okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> it's Oddity Museum is what they have in there. They have a Rolls Royce that allegedly was owned by Adolf Hitler what? or a mummified mother and child. I mean, it's that kind of like... What? Yeah, this is the kind of thing that ought to be across the street from the clown hotel, I think. It's really that kind of <laughs> weird and creepy. They should make a whole little town of these things. Well, appropriately, in Alaska, you won't guess what kind of house they have there. Igloo City. Yay. That seems like profiling. <laughs> Just because I'm in Alaska, it has to be igloos. <laughs> Initially intended as a hotel, they have a, a series of these concrete igloos and a colorful sign that say, stop in and see Igloo City. It, I don't know if it ever was a hotel, but you can still go and see this perplexing attraction that is nothing more than concrete igloos along the side of the road in Cantwell, Alaska. It's true. Huh. That, that seems <laughs> that's, to be my general comment for most of these. That's the universal reaction to all of these. <laughs> like, huh. look, none of these are Disney World, right? None of these are, let's plan a trip to go and see. It's more of, I'm bored. What the hell is that? Let's pull over and see. Yeah, we just happen to be there. If you're looking for truly generically named ones. There's one in Spring Green, Wisconsin called House on the Rock. Wow. That's a, that would be the world's worst address. Either that or it's like something out of WWE Smackdown, the house that the Rock built or something like that. I don't know. Right? So it's it's very accurate. It is a house, a massive home built on a rock face. They've constructed it in 1945. Has, it's yielded a number of indoor attractions. You can go inside of it. There's a horseless carousel. Oh, chandelier I saw collection. this one in like a documentary. Yeah. Oh, I really? Okay. It. Yeah. Look, okay. It's like Something George has collects heard of. all yeah. these different things. Well, I saw it on, you know, like a documentary. I never went to it or anything. But like a History Channel or something. They keep adding different attractions to it and they're out there exactly searching. Right. Like when yep. things go bankrupt and they buy them and put them in this place and stuff. 
stuff, I think. That's it. Yep. Yeah. That's the one. It, huh. Right there in Wisconsin. <laughs> Next time I'm there, I'm ducking yeah. in. <laughs> well, I mean, I got one that's, it's not that, but it's got a similar name. It's the Coral Castle. Okay. Here in Florida, believe it or not. It's a pretty famous place for a long time. Basically, it's between the cities of Homestead and Leisure City, but it's in like an unincorporated area in Miami-Dade County. This was the one that was built by that guy, Edward Leedskinen. He was born in 1887. Oh, this is ringing a bell. Yeah. Is this like, like the, the giant slabs of uh, it is. stone or something? Yeah. Right. He carved them out of limestone or whatever, but he didn't even build it in that place originally. Originally, he built it in Florida City in 1923, and then he moved the whole damn structure. And these are like multiple ton rocks. And he moved yep. the whole structure in 1936 over to this other place. Apparently, his reason for building it was because he was about to be married in Latvia, where he was from before he immigrated to the United States. <laughs> so he's a vampire? <laughs> he was right. a vampire, yeah. right? <laughs> One day before the wedding, his you know fiance or whatever, she just broke off the whole thing and didn't marry him. So it was like he was heartbroken and he built this in tribute to her to try and win her back to get her to come see this wonderful thing that he created. That, <laughs> that was like this whole kind of story that we tell people. I know, right? Like <laughs> passive stalker because he wouldn't follow her. He was right, trying to get right. her to come to him. He was a lazy stalker, I guess. But <laughs> I built you a bunch of stones. <laughs> don't leave me. But I remember seeing like, I don't know if it was an in search of or something like that. And I always wanted to go to that place when I it was got like lots in my of middle teens. I, know I remember. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And I just never got to go. I think it's still there. But, you know, as far as if it's still allowing visitors or what, I know it's on the National Register of Historic Places. So, you know, it's probably still protected, but. I just thought it was yep. kind of a cool place. You know what that reminds me of is another category of these kind of roadside attractions that always drew me. I've not been to any of these fake ones, but they have these hinges. So you guys know Stonehenge of that's in, oh. in Bath. I thought in you UK, were talking about right? like on a door. Yeah. Like, no, no, no. How does that remind hinge. you of a hinge on a door? Like I know he had that one stone that was a door that would slide around and stuff, but well, yeah, hinges, H E N G E S, not with an I. Is, they're, they're collections of giant stones of some kind. So you guys know Stonehenge, of course, right? Yes. Of course, yeah. Yeah. The, the main one in Alliance, Nebraska, they have car hinge. I'm sure you've seen photos of this. Oh, yes, I have. They literally have cars they've jammed into the ground and stacked on top of other cars to look like Stonehenge. Oh, OK. That makes sense. They copied Stonehenge, but with old crushed cars. That's it. Huh. <laughs> Why not? Again. Well, again, I want to see this. I just so bad. I'm never in Nebraska, but if I were, <laughs> I would totally stop and see car. Now you have a reason to go to Nebraska. <laughs> well, that's kind of strange. I don't know if that's the reason. <laughs> oh. Oh, we just lost our one viewer in Nebraska. So that's not the only one in Natural Bridge, Virginia. They have foam hinge. <laughs> okay, really? I don't think that yes, should count. It's a foam replica of the prehistoric site. So it looks like Stonehenge, but it's made out of heavy like construction foam. I'm sure there foam. are foam model kits on tons of kids' desks somewhere that are the same but it's, thing. This How is do these people one. get to be a this is full roadside size. attraction? This is full size. Okay, whatever. It's full size. So you can take pictures <laughs> and they, they think you're at the real one, maybe. <laughs> well, you can't get near the real one anymore. No, so. you can't. You can't. The closest you can get is uh, like maybe yeah, like 50 to 100 feet away. Oh, no, they don't let people closer. walk around no, anymore? No, too many people screw no, it up. No, no. Only in special times or uh, times of the year, like the summer solstice or something, they have a limited number of people can go. Otherwise, it's it's cordoned off and you can just get close to it is all. Hmm. Well, you know why? Because everybody wants to carve off a piece of it and say, oh, I got a piece of stone here. Oh, right. Yeah. Soon it's going to be freaking gone. So. Yeah. In Georgia, they have a kind of a hint called the Georgia Guidestones. I'd heard of these, Ooh, but I've never one. seen any of them. Yeah. Mm. So it's a roadside attraction that draws visitors from everywhere to see. There's six pieces of granite bearing 10 guidelines for living. And it's kind of off the beaten path. It's like they look like Stonehenge, these things, and carved into them are kind of like a I like a Ten Commandments-y kind of thing. Or oh, just I got you. Be good to each other. Right. Eat your fiber. You know, those kind of, I don't know what else. <laughs> I haven't been. I, I haven't been. Say, the only stone thing I know in Georgia is Stone Mountain, that big carving of the Confederate soldiers on the side of the road that sure. you drive past yeah. as you're going to Atlanta. Of course. Yep. And apparently it's like all written in different languages. Yeah, it's like a Rosetta Stone of <laughs> Rosetta Guidestone, <laughs> if you will, of of stuff. And so it's uh, it's it very it's hinge-like in appearance. Kind of preachy, I guess. I don't know. But apparently it draws people from all over to see them. And it's not like it was handed down for aliens or anything. It's just some dude carved them. But the Georgia Guidestone. Huh. Again. Huh. <laughs> exactly. Huh. You know, even with all that's happening here in Wisconsin this summer, a superstar like me never has trouble deciding what to do. I give plenty of advice for my adoring public. <laughs> 
Take a hike. Go jump in the lake. <laughs> See, there's two great ideas right there. Of course, <clears throat> not everyone can be this popular. So if I were you, I'd call 1-800-432-TRIP for a free Wisconsin guidebook. And the final category that I want to make sure we talk about, these are probably the least cheap or cheesy of all of these sorts of roadside attractions. <laughs> it's all relative. I guess. Yeah. These are natural wonders. This isn't somebody, you know, built a house out of beer cans or built a giant Jolly Green Giant. These are like someone discovered a great natural phenomena in an area. So the Secret Caverns in Howes Cave, New York, just to the west of Albany. And so that's a place where you can go and see these 100 uh, foot waterfall inside of this cavern, hand painted signs all over leading to the landmark from all directions. Oh, okay. One that I used to drive, we used to drive past and my dad wouldn't stop for was the uh, Mammoth Cave. Where is that? That's I in, remember uh, hearing about Tennessee, that. Tennessee, I think. Yeah. There's several in Tennessee here, these natural things. Yeah, well, because you have all the mountains going up course there, so not surprising there's geological oddities and interesting things along there. Yeah. Yeah, I never got to stop at Mammoth Caves, but a couple of these coming up, I did. We had another fourth listener that wrote in on Facebook. Thomas said, here in Missouri, we still have a soft spot for Route 66. Oh, wow. That's oh, iconic. yeah. That's not a roadside attraction. That is a road attraction. Yeah, that's right. Just, uh, <laughs> they still have a few remaining attractions along the Mother Road, the original Route 66. Uh, one advertises just like Rock City with plenty of barn painted, see Merrimack Caverns, Jesse James Hideout, stuff like that. Uh, that's awesome. But he brings up the next one I want to talk about. I think Rock City was earlier. Wikipedia says Rock City opened in 1932. Oh, wow. Isn't that the one that we would see the barns with the painting on the that's roof exactly as we would it. drive to Kentucky on 75? We would see Rock City. That's right. Yep. Rick also wrote in on Facebook and he said, Sea Rock City, you couldn't drive anywhere without seeing one of those barns. Right. It has to be the smartest ad campaign ever. Paint the <laughs> barns and rake in the returns. There are barns that still have that. They sure really? do. Wow. I wonder if the people who own the farms, if they got like some kind of royalties or something for... I've got to think so. I have to think that they do. You know, they had to pay them. Yeah, right. So Rock City, Lookout Mountain, Georgia, again, opened in 32, as Tom said. The attraction gained prominence after owners Garnet and Frida Carter hired Clark Byers in 1935 to start painting Sea Rock City barn advertisements throughout the Southeast. And that's all it was. Didn't say where it was. Just didn't say what exit Rock it was. City. Well, late, later they added Just that. Just Sea Rock City. Yep. Yeah. That was, and everybody's like, what the hell is it? Over 900 barn roofs and walls painted with that. Wow. Since 1969. Yep. I wonder if it's some point people just started painting it on their own barns just to like i'm just gonna paint rock city on my bar and see what happens <laughs> what? It's just, why not i'll just paint it for fun maybe somebody will pay me i don't know <laughs> i'm just gonna deface the side of my house why not let's see sure so what is rock city it's really just a natural geographic area they have a lookout where it says that you can stand and see seven different states from one spot huh, huh. there's been some debate about that but i definitely went to rock city i know george you're on allowed to go anywhere. Did you ever go to Rock no. City, Mo? No, never did. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't go to it, but we drove past it because we would go to Kentucky two, three times a year from Florida to Kentucky. Okay. And that route along 75 or whatever road we would go up, it was just littered with those Rock City signs. And I always begged to stop there. I had no idea what the hell it was. <laughs> a lot of people seem to like this on their barns. I have to go see it. With that much advertising, it must be amazing. <laughs> yes. I remember going as a kid and I, I was, I don't want to say disappointed, that's rude to the natural wonder that, that was this area. But it wasn't a theme park. With all the advertising, like I thought they must have a hell of a roller coaster or something. It, it was really just enjoy the majesty of this path and this they have one of those rope bridges that spans a giant gorge. And then it takes you over to the lookout where you can stand up and you put a quarter in these giant steel binoculars and you can look out oh, yeah. and see all the different states, those kind of things. It was a great tourist trap to get you there. What they had for me was a little underwhelming. But again, just it was because it was a kid and as God, it just seemed like it must be so good with all the advertising. I'd probably enjoy it better as an adult now, frankly, because uh, slow down and kind of smell the roses. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Not so much like rushing around looking at your phone. Yeah, exactly right. This ought to be right up your alley, George, that you drove up around through Tennessee and Chattanooga in that area, right in Chattanooga, Tennessee. You remember the signs for Ruby Falls? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah. Ruby Falls. Never got to go again. <laughs> <laughs> we need to take a road trip maybe and see some of the stuff that we were neglected when we were younger. <laughs> yeah, really. And we'll watch the Goonies as we go. Wow. <laughs> nice. That was out wow. of left field. Nice job. Wow. Man. Thank you. I just thought I'd give a zinger in there. <laughs> 
Ruby Falls is the nation's <laughs> tallest and deepest underground waterfall open to the public. Okay. So that means there's, is there a bigger one that's not open to the public? Well, they're, <laughs> or not discovered? Or, it, <laughs> this one is safe enough that you can actually have tourists walk through. Oh, okay. So it has tons of like, you know, stalactites and stalagmites and there's this underground thing. You know, I always thought that one of the coolest things about it, yes, it's the majesty of the waterfall and all the crystals in the walls and things. I just was happy. You walked in there and it felt like this giant cave was air conditioned. Oh, because before I was old enough oh, to right, understand yeah. It was just cold in down there, you know? And I'm like, oh, it's so nice in here. It truly is beautiful. Even that as a kid, I remember going, ooh, Ruby Falls was great. We would visit there a lot, I think, just because my grandmother was named Ruby. Uh, and so, like, we have to go and go see Ruby Falls, which is the same reason that we'd eat at Ruby Tuesdays or that kind of thing, just because. You're like, okay, the theme's getting a little old here. <laughs> right. Yeah. But Ruby Falls still welcomes over half a million visitors every year. I can see why. Around that's the world. pretty, that's, yeah, it's one of these natural wonders, so I could see it surviving. I guess. Right. It's not like the giant teapot or the giant fish. I mean, it's actually... Exactly. We mentioned Thomas earlier who wrote in on Facebook. He had one more thing that I wanted to save here for the end because I don't think we can possibly top this. Oh, (laughs) jeez. He says, today in St. Robert, Missouri, there is a roadside attraction much clever at pulling people off the road or at least giving them a good laugh, even if you don't stop. I think you guys would enjoy this place. It's called the Uranus Fudge Factory. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Wait a minute. I know how to take that. What do you mean? (laughs) Okay. I, I, I don't. Oh. Is that like the it's, mystery it's hole? Mi- or is that- <laughs> There's no mystery about what this place is, I don't think. All right, Tom sent us a link to YouTube to take a look at this ad for the Uranus Fudge Factory. Brace yourself. Oh, Mo, geez, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, George, are you sitting down? No, I'm not going to. I don't want to be ready in any shape or form for this. You, you should sit down for this. Okay, okay, here it goes. The best fudge comes from Uranus. Oh, oh, oh my God. Uranus, Missouri. <laughs> she just no pulls it. Tastes what? Better. Better. <laughs> wow. Deep in the crack of America's heartland. <laughs> 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 of course, give me their amazing fudge. That's right. Fudge from Uranus. I'm not fudging with you. We're Uranus. That's the mayor of Uranus. And you can get your fudge out the back door. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I'm not fudging with you. I'm as serious as a fudging horse kick to the side of your fudging head. Oh, my God. <laughs> There's a fudge for everyone. <laughs> right now, I'm making the mayor's number two. <laughs> you can try some at UranusGeneralStore.com. Click now. That is some yummy fudge from Uranus. The best fudge does come from Uranus, Mr. Mayor. Wow. <laughs> That's my dad. <laughs> That's my dad. Oh, my God. I still want to go there. <sighs> wow. Mm. Well, we can't unhear that. <laughs> I... I- <laughs> I, I actually want to go see that place. Thanks a lot, Thomas. That place looks hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so long to come and join us. There's so much going on in Tennessee. We're playing your song. Come to Tennessee. We're playing your song. Come to Tennessee. We're playing your song. If there was anything in this show you'd like to learn more about, the show notes which accompany each episode are full of links to click and explore. Catch up on past episodes and get pinged every time a new one's released by subscribing wherever you listen to podcasts. And you know, iTunes reviews help more than you know, so if you haven't yet, please rate and review us in the iTunes app. And if you have a friend who isn't yet listening, why not? Tell them about us, they'll thank you later. You're our fourth listener, and we'd love to read your emails right here on the show, so hit us up at podcast at genxgrownup.com. And finally, Gen X Grown Up is more than just this podcast. Our YouTube channel has hundreds of videos ready for you to enjoy. Plus, you can find our entire body of work on genxgrownup.com. Well, on that note, I think that will more than wrap it up yeah. for our look at <laughs> roadside attractions. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no. I, I kind of want to go on a road trip. I kind of want to go to the Uranus Fudge Factory and some of these. I don't know when I will. You know, my schedule is so packed. <laughs> it's fudge packed. It, whoa, easy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Come on. Oh, my goodness. That was a good one. I'll it, give you that it was, one. Okay, it was clever. I'll give you that. <laughs> <laughs> Before we get out of this episode, I absolutely want to take just a moment to thank all the fine folks who support us over on Patreon. And I'm talking about you, Will and Dana and Corey and Thomas and Chad and Levi and Stian and Agile and T2 and Slow Mo and Stubaka and brand new since we spoke last, Mike, who's also a supporter 
over Ooh, on Patreon. Yay. Welcome, Mike. Thank you, Mike. We appreciate each and every one of you. If you would like to join this cadre of amazing human beings who support us, head over to patreon.com slash Gen X Grown Up for as little as a buck a month or a little more. If you love us even more, you can support what we do <laughs> here on the podcast, on YouTube, and over on the website. So thank you to all of our patrons and thank you to all of you fourth listeners for checking out this edition of the Backtrack Podcast. We'll be back in two weeks with another Backtrack, but next week, as always, with a regular edition of our show. Until then, I am John. Thanks so much, George, for being here. Yes, sir. Mo, you know I appreciate you. Oh, man, always fun. And fourth listener, we appreciate you. Most of all, we'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye. See you guys. Take care, everybody. No life, no fun. Don't you know that you're a grown-up? Gen X Grown Up is a member of the Evergreen Podcast family. Learn more at evergreenpodcasts.com. We're also an affiliate of the Geeks Worldwide Radio Network. You can check them out at the GWW.com. Now then, it's time to get into our backtrack on... The fuck is it called? Roadside, Roadside Attractions. Track. Yeah, I got it. I had to scroll up. <laughs> and there's your blooper. I guess so. It's like... You know, a big rock star going to a city and like saying the wrong city, like "Hello, Cincinnati." Mm-hmm. And then he's in the <laughs> Cleveland. Or something. <laughs> uh, it was built in. Uh, I'm not even going to talk about that one because it sounds really stupid. I was going to say, well, that's yeah, the that, one that I just like put in, asshole. Oh, what oh, the oh fuck? Did, I'm sorry, I didn't see that. Shit, is that the one you were talking about? God yes. damn it! I just, I'm sorry. I, God damn. I'm it's sorry. Like he's I moving it up it. the list and then deleting it. What the fuck? I'm, I'm so, I apologize. <laughs> well, I didn't see it added. I'm like, I didn't put much detail in that. I'm going to delete it. No, but was, you had something to say. I was in the middle no, of no, typing. No, no, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not a person. Like I have one thing to talk about. <laughs> Are you tired of seeing your teen or young adult struggle on a path that clearly isn't the right fit? Is your teenager confused about which direction to take after high school? The future of work is changing rapidly. And our kids need to know all of the options available after high school so they're empowered to make the choice that is best for them. In each episode, we explore the latest trends that are shaping the opportunities of today and tomorrow. I'm your host, Betsy Jewell, and this is the High School Hamster Wheel Podcast.